and we're back. Okay, I think the wheat has finally grown. I do have some mishaps inside. There's a few that have not grown. Mainly here. <laughs> and I think that is because of when I added in that condominium in the back there, it blocked the sunlight from coming down. So these may not be getting enough light, which is something I should try to remedy. But for the most part, it is full, so let's harvest. Unfortunately, it is the middle of the day, so I can't get rid of the rain. But I will turn off particles. Although I think I have my volume fairly low. Okay, so what I am going to do to show how this works is try to get a good angle on it. Um, like here would be a good place. <laughs> Can I hit the button and get over here in time? Let's try. All right, so let us harvest. Nope, nope. There we go. So you can see the water is snaking from left to right and back, and then the wheat is falling down. So the longest you have to wait for wheat to travel is basically from here to there, there to there kind of thing. Once it reaches the end, it just drops. So there you go. There's that thing being worked. Let's see how much we get. See this rock right there to pick everything up. Same with that spot. Oh, I think I'm full. I'm full. Let's get rid of some seeds. I've just been storing it here. But I do have to replant. And you may have seen a seed stuck there. They do get stuck sometimes on those pressure... Uh, uh, pressure plates, the uh, trap doors. We used to have doors here when I first built the thing, and then <laughs> I had villagers inside because <laughs> they thought they were houses. So I changed it to trap doors. But yeah, occasionally you get one that gets stuck. But I figure I gotta come up here to replant, so not a big deal. And here. This is just so I can walk down and not accidentally trample things. So in terms of wheat, we got how many stacks? about six, seven stacks, probably seven if it was full, if I didn't have those little trouble areas. Just throw that in there with the rest. And there we go. I hope that shows how this thing works, clarifies things. Um, if you have any other questions, or if I could improve that somehow, let me know. And yeah, let's move on to something else. Okay. I've got a request to show how this little, oops, man, I'm, oh, let's start that again. I got a request to show how this ore packager thing works um, and possibly do a tutorial on it. I could try doing a tutorial, I haven't done one before, so it might be a little challenging for me, but I will give that a go. But first, how about we just take a peek inside the inner workings to show what's going on. Maybe I will get rid of these ores so we can get back at those other pistons. I'll probably speed this up for you. All right, let's get rid of this stuff since I clearly don't have enough space. Let's put this redstone away. And that almost got me to 30. Oops. All right.
Okay. So what I'm going to do, now it's a little compact back there, but hopefully I can get back there and show what's going on. So first, you can see probably better from this angle than the one I had before. Okay, so there's a torch here. That's just on. There is redstone hooked up to it, but its default state is just to power this repeater so that as soon as you place a block here, it transfers the power through. And what that does is powers this redstone signal there. And that's what initiates the machine. So yeah, as soon as, basically as soon as a block is pushed here, this piston will immediately fire it up. And then again, and again, and again. So it'll fire up four times. And then when a block gets placed up there, and I just got rid of all my dirt. Uh, when, yeah, when a block gets placed at the top there, there's another smart piston set up. So there's the redstone torch. There is some redstone dust right on top of this guy. So as soon as this gets a block, there's a repeater right there. You can see it highlighted. So that will suck the power out of that block. And that sends signal to these guys to all fire. So it's kind of sequential. This guy fires four times, which then causes these guys to push that over. And then causes all these to fire well, that's not totally true. <laughs> that's actually false. When it gets over to here is when these guys all fire. So yeah, my mistake. Uh, I got a little confused on my own design. Okay, so yeah. So here's the last smart piston set up. So it's just this guy who's kind of got the sensor, but it fires all of them. So when a block gets put right above this torch, it'll send a signal that way. So... Let's go in. Let's destroy everything. Okay, so here we are. This is actually under the, s the village where the wiring is for the lamps as well. So there's some wiring here that is not part of this machine, like this guy and this block here. That's part of the lamps. Okay. Let's go. Maybe we should start at the other end, but okay, just for this guy, you can see it's pretty simple. So a block gets placed here, powers, powers this redstone signal, which comes up to here, and over here, and it splits right here. Now this wiring isn't all that pretty, but it works. <laughs> and There's probably a better way I could have done it, but this is the way I did do it. So yeah, it splits signal here. Now I wanted them all to fire at the same time, so I wanted to try to keep as little delay going as possible. But I did need to invert the signal, so I did have to use at least one redstone torch to do that. And there they are. So there's one torch for each row of 16. So yeah, the signal comes up here, turns off this torch, which turns off this line of redstone, which turns on these torches, which fires this row of pistons, and also the row of pistons that you can't see. That's right below it, right there. So it fires 16 pistons. And then the same for the top. Redstone signal turns off the torch, turns off that line of redstone, turns on those torches, which turns, extends this guy and this guy all the way down. So that is that part. And uh, let's see, yeah, I head over here. So that's all that is. I have. Ooh, some other controls in here for because this thing will lock up and in my earlier renditions of this thing it did so if it spammed too quickly it would actually lock up so you had to like slow it down to such a speed it was just awful so I tried to work in a way that it would kind of keep itself going and prevent it from locking up and I achieved it by doing a few things Let's get out back to the front so we can kind of get a better idea of where we are. All right, so here we are at the front again. I put in this button. I don't think it's needed anymore, but on the off chance this thing does get locked up or jammed up, which again happens if uh, like a piston is trying to push a block, but there's something else in its way, 
so it can't extend, it'll get kind of locked up and the machine will kind of freeze. So I don't want that to happen. So I installed a button to reset the machine in case that does happen. And I don't think it does happen anymore now that I've wired the machine the way I have. But essentially, let's just ignore that reset switch for now. But there's the torch for the smart piston, which does the, it's gonna be difficult. <laughs> so that torch is this torch, right? And right below is the redstone dust. So that when you put a block there, this whole row pushes. All right, so why does it do that? Let's go sh find out. So yeah, that signal is down there and where it's coming out is actually right here. So this, there we go. Oh, <laughs> the repeater was up here, which I just got rid of, powering this block, which will power this redstone dust right below. Now this was very cramped, so it was a little tricky to get done. So there's a lot of wires running really close to other wires, and I had to try to make sure that they didn't interfere with each other. And I finally did get it to work. So, so yeah, that's that part. And let's go where that comes out. Where are we? Even I'm lost. So yeah, there's that redstone dust. So it went two blocks. So it should be pointing directly into this guy, which, if I'm not mistaken, has a torch on the back of it. So this redstone dust coming into the back of this. I wonder if I can... Yep, yeah, I think I can get rid of that for now. That's cutting the wire. So yeah, that block is just to make sure that this wire gets pointed towards there. Boop. Okay, so yeah. So when that row of pistons gets power by placing a block, so that transfers the power through to those redstone dusts, that turns off this torch, which goes over here. We'll light that up. It also lights this redstone dust, which goes to this torch. So we got two torches that will fire on at the same time, which just pushes that row over. And also, it also powers this line, which, <laughs> oh, it's not gonna let me do it, which goes down to, yaw, let's get rid of these. Okay, so yeah. So when these fire, these pistons fire, it sends a signal down behind there. Destroying my machine. Yeah, sends a signal down here as well at the same time. So what this does is it turns off this torch for a second. And the reason you need that, let's just break it, is otherwise, do I have enough? Five, that should be enough. It'll go, and then it'll lock up. So because these guys were in there, this guy was powered, but it couldn't move. So that piston got locked up. So I remedied that by kind of having it toggle itself off every time. So when these pistons are firing, it's actually turning this off. So it gives that piston a break sort of thing. <laughs> so this one won't actually turn back on until the, the way is clear. And there's other little wiring things like that in place to prevent the thing from locking up. Like this guy right here. So we saw that these rows a piston wall get powered from the other side. It also gets powered from this side but only from this reset switch. So this reset switch just basically toggles all the pistons off. So it just tries to clear jam if there is one. So the button is, I think, either right here on this block, I think. So it powers this redstone signal, which will turn off 
this dust, which will, if there's a block that's locked in there, kind of turn off these pistons for a second and then turn them back on. So it'll clear it if there is one in place. And then it sends a signal down here. So one goes to this block, powers it, which will turn off this line of redstone dust. And because this block is being powered, it will also power down here. Um, let's get back up. That makes sense. Of course, uh, let me turn particles on because it's hard to see that this guy is actually on right now. So, I mean, if I hit the reset button right now, it wouldn't do anything, right? Because this is already powered, so sending a power signal to it is pointless. But when this thing gets jammed up, it gets jammed up in the extended position. So those pistons are out, and there's nowhere for things to get pushed. This also happens when, or may only happen, when the machine gets full. So if you load it all the way to its capacity, that's when this will jam up. So this kind of prevents that from happening, or allows you to reset it after you have kind of ored out all the stuff. So yeah, it sends, so that's that reset line for both this one and these guys, and then you saw the other one going down that way. And that, when this block is in place, gets sent right into that block, which we saw turns this redstone torch off, which turns that dust off and that dust off. So those just are kind of like little reset toggles to get the machine working again. That's all it does. The rest is just, yeah, smart pistons that work. So it's a little tricky getting all that stuff to work with each other and to fit it all in a ooh, good voice crack and to fit it all in this little compact space, I could have probably just dug out some more area to make it work. But So yeah, that's a little cramped. Hopefully that gives you an idea of kind of how this works. But I could definitely look at doing a tutorial where I clean up the wiring a lot and giving you a yeah something easier to follow than me running back and forth behind walls and breaking locks and putting locks back. So I could totally do that, and I will look at doing that if people would re, uh, prefer that. So let me know in the comments. And I just have these half slabs here because I don't want anything to spawn. So half slabs don't cut off the wiring. So I just kind of do that everywhere. Um, whoops. Yeah, let's close that back up. And what do we have? Crack? Sure, let's put it there. And stair goes. Am I missing a stair? Apparently. Anyway, I'll fix that later, I guess. So yeah, that is that. So, I can show you it working again. Let's grab a couple of these. Maybe I'll just do a full load and I'll speed it up. I don't actually know how many this takes. Let's make sure I didn't break anything too. Okay, here we go. Whoops, had a little hiccup there. Oops, where did I put my tools? So I gotta watch where I'm stepping. Let's fix that. Yeah, make sure you're not in some place where that will push you. Carrying on. Wow, this thing takes a lot.
And there we have it. So it is full. Man, that is a lot. I guess it's, how long is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, okay. So 11 times four, so 44 per row, times 12, is it, or 13? I never remember. Yeah, so now you can see the machine is locked up. Sort of. Those guys can't be pushed because there's nowhere for them to go. Um, maybe we can see what's going on from above. So yeah, these pistons won't push anymore. So this is where they get piston locked because there's that block down there that's still activo activating, activating, activating that redstone signal. So yeah, so I think that reset switch is still required. So once I clear off all this stuff, um, I have to hit this button to get it ready to work again. And that'll kind of clear this part up too. All right. So I hope that was good and informative. I probably won't speed up that whole footage because I just realized how long that took. And even sped up would be pretty boring. <laughs> so I'll probably just show a bit of it and then I'll cut and then I'll come back. So yeah, that was the Ore Packager Machine. Maybe we can think up a cool name for it or anagram of some kind. Somebody tell me where the step is. Where did, what did I do with it? Seriously, I got a wooden one. Was it wood? I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, take care, guys. See you all next time. Bye-bye.